Clark Deaver from Vuzix in the U.S. visited us at Vuzix Europe and described some of the capabilities of the two new Vuzix augmented reality products. So this is the 920 AR. It's a video pass-through augmented reality device. What it means is that these cameras, we've got two of them, they're stereoscopic, which allows you to maintain your sense of depth perception, uh, capture the image in front of the user from their perspective, and then we pass it into a computing device. It could be a, a mobile phone, like an Android phone, or a PC. Um, and then we look at the frames from the camera, and we interpret whatever data uh, that's there. We can add additional elements like 3D characters or um, data that the user might need to make a, a decision such as map directions or um, any kind of game elements into the video stream and then we'll play them back through these displays that the user can see. The video pass-through devices are really great for their immers immersive qualities. Um, the objects that are rendered into the user's view blend very well with the video stream and it feels like there is a character right in front of you that you can respond to, that you can act to. So video pass-through AR, its niche is really um, both entertainment and things where you're not so much worried about people's situational awareness. Like in a heavy industry setting, you might not want to uh, use these because of the limited, more limited field of view. I, I tell people, you know, in a, in, a, in a more closed shop environment, like if you were um, doing assisted manufacturing is one of the terms that I like to use. And I go, oh, what's that mean? It's like, well, if it's a very complex uh, process, you can use the cameras uh, to guide the manufacturer in, in the steps of the process. And you can also capture the video from the device and feed it back for quality assurance. Another application would be technical um, maintenance. Uh, you have an end user out in the field and they have a question uh, that's above their level of expertise with the product. They can remotely call into um, a second level tech support and they have a virtual like, telepresence. They can see what the technician is seeing and then actually draw in their field of view what they need to do. And, and so you get this, these communication abilities that you wouldn't have otherwise. So those are a few applications that make these an interesting uh, product. Clark went on to describe Vuzix's see-through AR product and went through some of the features and use cases. Now this is a, a see-through AR device and what we use is it's called a beam splitter technology. Um, and so there's an LCD above each eye and it, uh, it has a backlight and those backlights push the, the pixels down and then there's a, a mirror that allows 50% of the light to pass through it. And so what that does is it bounces uh, some of the digital data into your view, but also allows the real world, the light from your ambient surroundings to come in as well. Uh, so the applications for this are much more um, versatile in the sense that it allows you to, in an uninhibited way, experience your world, um, but we can add a digital layer of data to that experience. So these would be the kind of devices you'd use if you were walking around a city and you look at a building and you can get the history of that building or you need a map somewhere. And before people have been looking forward to a, a see-through product for a while, it's kind of the holy grail of augmented reality because you'll be able to uh, navigate your surroundings in a very natural way but have data presented to you um, from you know, a computerized source. Uh, with the prevalence of mobile devices, mobile computing becoming so powerful and you know, 4G and LTE networks um, giving you access to the cloud, you're going to start to see apps that give functionality that are really going to change the way we live. But this device um, isn't a consumer product yet. It's targeted at advanced R&D labs and application developers, um, universities, people who are really starting to theorize about where this can go. Um, so with that in mind, when we built the product, um, we, we have on our roadmap a, a product about 18 months out that looks a lot more like a consumer product. But this was built to get something in the hands of developers today so that they can start prototyping these sorts of applications so that when uh, the next generation product becomes available, there's already an ecosystem around to support it. But with the concept in mind that we were selling into R&D houses, we wanted to make this really versatile um, for our customers. We do some work in defense, we do some work in, in the industrial settings, um, and the end goal is to make consumer products. 
uh, so they have different needs. This, uh, it ships with a visible light, or visible spectrum camera, but we've had people put infrared, microwave, um, light, or, yeah, microwave length video cameras on them, uh, because different computer vision um, problems are solved with those different cameras. So, another thing is, this display engine pops right off and you can mount it into any sort of uh, device you need to, whether it be a, a shield to uh, protect someone or a, a helmet mount. Um, we really wanted to give people a lot of flexibility in how they use it. Along with both of these devices, there's an input for a six degree of freedom head tracker. And what that means is that we can tell the user's pitch, uh, yaw, roll, um, all the data of where they're looking, plus where they're moving in 3D space, X, Y, and Z. That's the six degrees that are covered. Um, and included, we also have two inputs for stereo earbuds, so if you need voice instruction. Uh, so th that's basically the, the two products. Clark concluded by giving us a glimpse of what's coming next from Vuzix to enable consumers to experience augmented reality in their everyday lives. It's a, a, a developer-based product going into you know, research labs and universities. Um, but the technology that we're working on right now, uh, it, it looks totally different than this. And in 12 to 18 months, it'll be available. Uh, this is a, a VGA display, so it's uh, 640 by 480. Um, and we use this, I told you a little bit about how wave, or, um, beam splitters work. Well, the next gen, we're not using beam splitters anymore. We're using this technology called uh, a waveguide optic, which is basically like uh, a, a fiber optic where you can send light down the channel and display it somewhere else. And with the waveguides, we etch holograms in the glass. And so the LCDs and all this bulk that you see right now goes away, and the LCD gets moved back closer to the temple, and that shifts a lot of the weight back towards your ear, so you feel it less on your nose. And that waveguide optic wraps that light from the LCD around uh, into the user's field of view. And what this is going to do is, A, give you more pixels to work with, and we're also working on how to increase the field of view. Right now it's about 35 degrees, and we're hoping to double that over the next 12 to 18 months. The other thing is, so, so we've gotten rid of these uh, big bulky um, units that, that block your view, we've gotten rid of some of the weight, but also think about your mobile phone, right? Your mobile phone has a camera on it and it's, it's pea-sized, right? So this is just really, um, we, we created these mounting points so you could go with any camera, kind of camera technology you wanted if in the industrial setting, but really in the consumer product it's going to be a very small um, form factor like, like you're familiar with. And so at that point, you have a product that weighs two or three ounces, gives you a great field of view, and high definition. And that's really where we're running to uh, with this product. And, uh, you know, we're, we're getting close. I've seen it in the labs, and I've seen the little bits of technology that are coming together. And so we're really looking forward to that.